or calling me in Jesus' name. I thank all my friends, all our guests, my um, high school classmates, from Star School to ISI to UI. I see all God bless you for coming. May the Lord reward you exceedingly in Jesus' name. Yeah. I want you to tell your neighbor, tell your neighbor that it is my season of shifting to the next level. It's my season of shifting to the next level. Amen. Amen. That's what God is about to do today. I'd like to appreciate our panelists. Thank you so much for coming. God bless you. We, I mean, it was insightful, it was powerful, and I know we have all learned a lot. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Now I want to appreciate my darling husband. <laughs> in psychology and my son is rounding up his um, college and uh, he's studying finance in um, Texas Tech. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And I have my sister-in-law here, Lola Adebo Thank you, thank you for hosting me. She's a sister-in-law, praise the Lord. She's out of our wonderful daughter, Tamino Ray. Thank you so much. And so we're going into our word today. I'm going to be speaking on shift, and I believe that it is time for God to shift us to into our next season. If you believe that it is time for God to shift, you say yes! Yes! yes. Hallelujah! Yes. Hallelujah! You know, God has brought somebody here to enter into your next season. And when we talk about shift, we're talking about transitioning, repositioning, it's a movement, it's something that God has decided to do. You know, the Bible says that it is set time to favor Zion. And so it is our set time in the name of Jesus Christ. So if you think you came here for yourself, or if you came here for God, God brought you here for himself. Amen? And so I declare that in the name of Jesus, barriers are broken today. In the name of Jesus, the Lord is shifting you to your next level. The Almighty God is opening heavens, heavens portals are open, and you begin to see, receive revelation of the next uh, agenda that God has for you in the name of Jesus. God is going to exceed your expectation here in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. And like I said, the divine shift is a supernatural advancement from one place to the other. And so life is made up of seasons. If you look at it, it can see it says 3 1, it says to everything there is a season, a time for everything under the sun. So seasons always come and go. And the way seasons come and go is the same way God expects us to transition. You never stay in one season. God did not create to die in a season. And so we have autumn, we have winter. You know, when you think of winter, it's a time of rest, it's a time of hibernation. When you think of summer, it's a time of flourishing. Everybody is, everything is boisterous, things are happening, endless opportunities. And when we, when we think of autumn, that is the time when leaves fall. And so things begin to quieten. It's a time of letting go. And when you think of spring, spring represents a new beginning, a fresh start. And so in life, there are seasons. Just like God makes seasons, God also made us to transition during seasons. You know, there are times of season, and God will help us in Jesus' name. Also, Genesis 12, 1, it says, God told Abraham to move out of his father's house, to go to the place where he will show him and he will bless him. And so the only um, requirement necessary to set the promise in motion was for Abraham to move. He says, once you get out, then I will bless you. Those promises will come. So getting out means you need to move, you need to shift. For those promises to come to pass. So when God wants to bless you, when God wants to shift you, he will shift you into position, but also he has to shift you out of condition. So you are in a particular condition and then he shifts you into position, which is what he will do today in Jesus' name. Amen. And so I believe that shift causes an upgrade or advancement in life. God will never shift you down. He always shifts you up. Amen. Even though the, you might go through a season which as if, it might seem as if he's shifting you down, but at the end of the day, it's going to turn around for good, and you will know that he's actually shifting you up. Praise the Lord. And so, most of the time, when you're meant to go through a shift, it's a disruption. It is taking you from familiar to unfamiliar. You know, that is what happens. Like somebody was saying that from pain to purpose, 
from pain to purpose. So God shifted Joseph from his father's house, and then he became, he went into slavery, and then he became a convict before he finally became a prime minister. So you have to go through that process. You know, God takes you from a place of explanation to a place of demonstration of his power. So initially, it's a place of explanation. Because when you look at Mary, Mary was in a state of explanation. How can a virgin become pregnant? But God had a better plan. He was bringing the savior of the earth, of the universe. So it was a place of explanation. But then, he was taking her to a place of demonstration of his power and glory. May that be somebody's portion here in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. And so sometimes, it is also difficult to sit in transition while you are being threatened by opposition. So what I mean is that, you know, shift is a transition. So God was taking you through that transition, but at the same time, you are being threatened with opposition. People don't want you to enter into that next level. You know, Mordecai was at the gate. You know, that was where he was. He was like a servant or whatever at the gate. And he was, the gate was his place of transition because he was still going to get to the palace. But Haman was there threatening his life, saying that all the Jews are going down. So he was in a place where God wanted to do great things, but he had to face opposition. Sometimes you're in the place where God wants to bless you, but it seems as if things are you know, happening in a tough way, just like um, Jacob, when he was going to marry Rachel. You know Laban did Jacob Leah, the first daughter. While well, Rachel was thinking she was going to get married to her husband, the father brought, I mean, the father-in-law, was it father-in-law? No, her father now brought in another, the firstborn and said, in our tradition, the firstborn has to get married before the secondborn. And so it was a place of transition, but um, she was going through opposition at that point. She had to wait another seven years before she could actually marry her husband. And so, you know, I know that sometimes when we shift, we shift under pressure. But I pray that in the name of Jesus, no matter what the pressure is, you will shift to the place of your divine reservation and allocation in the name of Jesus. If you receive it, I want you to say glory. Glory. Praise God. Also, your season of shifting is the most significant place of opportunity and the most vulnerable place of insecurity. So it's an opportunity, you know, God wants to do something different in your life. But then you are vulnerable. How is it going to work out? Am I going to survive? Is this, is this thing going to change? What is the result going to be? When God called Moses, Moses was at a vulnerable state. He didn't want to go. He even said he was a stammer, he can't talk. And that was when God said, you know, Aaron will speak for you. So he was in a, he was the most significant place of opportunity. Because he was going to be the one God was going to use to um, lead the greatest exodus that ever happened in the world. But he was scared. He didn't want to do it. And so sometimes, like I said, you are feeling secure that this next move God is about to bring out in my life. Am I ready for it? What is going to happen? So you have questions. But the Bible says that those that do business with God must go in deep waters. If you are going to work with God, if you are going to be committed and, you know, Love God and serve God and believe in God, you have to be able to take risk. You have to be able to take risk and trust that God will back you up. That is the kind of God who serve. And the Almighty God will never fail you in the name of Jesus. Amen. And so I'm going to be taking my um, scripture from Deuteronomy 2 3. And it says, The Lord told the Israelites, You know, you have been on this mountain too long, turn northwards. So God knows when you have expired in a certain season. He said it is too long. Turn. Turn means shift. It means move. Take another way. You know? And so everything that represents a mountain, since you have been at this mountain too long, everything that represents a mountain in your life, maybe it's a position, maybe it's a location, maybe it's a relationship, maybe it's a, an assignment, a business, you know, a project, whatever it is that you have stayed on too long. May the Almighty God move you out of there. Even when you don't want to move, He will move you by God in Jesus' name. Do you know that was what happened to God? When they went to save Lot, the two angels, when they went to save Lot, and they got there, and they told him to come out of the city, the Bible says he hesitated. That means that he was negotiating if he should leave or not. And the Bible says that the angels grasped his hand and ran out, you know, took him out of the city. And so even when you are negotiating your destiny, God is a merciful God. He will still send you help that will rush you out of that situation. May you not be a casualty in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. So, you know, I believe that this is the time to align with God's agenda 
God wants us to align with his agenda, even as she speaks to us in the name of Jesus. And another thing you need to know is that you don't need anybody's consensus to shift. You don't need anybody's approval. You only need God's validation. So don't wait on man. Once you know that this is the time God is speaking to you, it's a pivotal moment. You can't afford to miss it. You need to, you know, you need to be able to enter into that thing. You need to be able to accept it and run with it. And God will grant you grace in Jesus' name. Amen. And so don't ever retard your growth to make other people comfortable. Don't retard your growth. Don't give anybody the driver's seat of your, of your life. Don't let them stare the wheel of your vehicle, you know, because of anybody. Don't do that, you know. Once God opens the door, just enter into it. If he thought that you could not sit on a table in that door, he wouldn't have brought you there. It's because he has created a table for you. He has opened the door, so you need to enter into that room and take your place. Don't let anybody obstruct you and say you're not good enough. Don't let anybody obstruct you and feel like, you know, make you feel inferior. You know, like somebody said, it is the way you present yourself that people will treat you. If you treat yourself like a bitch, they will treat you like a bitch. If you treat yourself like somebody that's always carrying other people's bag, maybe they see you, they think you are about to carry it. That is where they will put you, and you will see your colleagues and your contemporaries that they are treated better than that. But it's because you have decided to treat yourself like that. You know, I know people that, you know, I have associations, I have relationships with, and, you know, maybe, maybe when we are together, and then I'll see somebody else that maybe is my colleague. But the way that person will be behaving, I think the person is a beggar. Those other people don't have respect for the person. The person is not a beggar, but he's just intimidated. God did not create you to be intimidated. Don't be under pressure because of anybody. Know who you are. Know your rights. Start the boldness and audacity and courage. And people will see the glory of God in you. If you receive it, say yes. yes. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. <laughs> and so, I, okay, I've jumped now. I was getting excited. <laughs> I want you to know that your prep time prepares you for your prime time. There's a prime time coming up, but you know you will always go through that prep season. And in the name of Jesus, you will make it in Jesus' name. Yeah. So today, I'm going to quickly look at four areas where God wants us to shift, where God, does, God wants us to experience a shift. The first place is in, in his relationship, spiritually. God wants you to shift in your relationship with God. Another thing is God wants you to shift away from your past. You're going to shift away from that past that is holding you bondage. Another thing is that God wants to shift your seasons. Like I said, you're in an expired season, and God wants to shift out of the season. The last one is God wants to shift your mindset. God wants to shift our mindset. You know, he says that we should have the mind of Christ, and God is about to do a work in your mind or on your mind in Jesus' name. And so God desires your relationship with him to shift to the next level. We all know that the reason why we are created is to bring pleasure to God. It's not just to bring pleasure to ourselves, it's to bring pleasure to God. And so we are living for an audience of one. Only God. Let God be pleased and everybody be displeased. It doesn't matter. As long as God is pleased, that is the audience that we are living for. And that's your number one responsibility in life. Praise the Lord. And for you, obviously, to bring pleasure to God, you have to be committed, dedicated, hungry, you know, rely on Him and all that for you to have that relationship with Him. And so when I talk about shifting your spiritual life, it's for either people that want to be ignited in their relationship with God, or people that need to be re reignited in their passion. Maybe your passion is wavering down. You know when you hear us talking about, and sometimes it's about you. The red flag is about you. And God will need to tell you, you are not praying as often as you normally pray. The Spirit of God will begin to tell you, you are not reading the word like you normally read the word. And those things happen suddenly. And it's going to progress. It will progress from you know praying every day to praying four days to praying then three days, two days, one day, and the devil is just setting it up. An attack on your prayer life is an attack on your destiny. Okay. And so he just begins to warm you up, and the Holy Spirit is nudging you there. Yeah, not pray like you used to pray, oh, you know, but sometimes, like she said, we, we take it for granted. It's very important. So many people have been saved, so many children have been saved. When all of a sudden your child's name comes to your mind, why do you think it's coming to your mind? Or you just see the picture of someone. God is telling you, pray. And then just ask, when I finish this phone call, or when I finish cooking. By the time you are finished, it's too late. So, you know, of course, God is merciful, but we have to be able to be spiritually sensitive and alert. And God will help us in Jesus' name. Amen. And so, like I said, God has to be priority. 
you know, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all the other things will be added unto you. And God is looking for women that will love him or respect him, no matter what season you are going through, even when the season is bad. You don't have a choice. Still love God. He's the only one that can change your situation anyway. Yes. You know, and so, you know, God wants us to be hungry for his presence. You know, hungry for him. You know, that scripture that says that blessed are those that fast and hunger for righteousness for they shall be filled. The fact that you are hungry alone, you are even blessed. That scripture says, blessed are those that hunger and fast. So you are hungry, you are already blessed. And then you now fill you. God wants to fill you with his presence, with his aura. And you know, once you begin to get hungry, uh, it's, it's, it's a blessing, it's an opening for God to do great things in your life. I want you to know that hunger is currency in the spirit. Heaven takes notice of people that are hungry for God. That means you desire God. You, you yearn for God. You want to spend more time with Him. And you know, hunger helps you to press for intimacy and proximity with God. You just want to be closer to Him. You want to be more intimate. And He will use that to uh, elevate you and release some function into your life. And so, but the problem is that hunger has been brought in our generation. And so we are more hungry for things of the world, we are hungry for fashion, and I love fashion, but you know there's a balance, you know, but we are hungry for all other things, we are having appetite for food and gist and all these things, and our spiritual man is growing leaner, while our physical man is growing fatter. There's a problem, you know, there's a problem when we can't fast. You think if you fast, we die. I used to think so too. I don't like fasting because I'm already slim. Yeah, fast night. Fast big. Like if I begin to fast, I'm just disappear. So you know, so the Lord told me that anytime I'm fasting, look, you are not going to die. If you fast for two days, if you fast for one day, you know. So why don't you just fast? So you know, God will help us to desire Him in Jesus' name. And so I want us to know that the volume of our appetite determines the degree of our manifestation in life. The Bible says that those that do know they are God shall be strong and do excellence. So the more you desire him, the more he helps you to manifest his glory. So we need to have an appetite for that. But unfortunately, a lot of us have become spiritually careless. And so what do I mean? We have become too pampered to be powerful. We are looking for people to pray for us, people to see visions, people to tell you this, people to carry you. you don't want to, we don't want to do anything again. We just want to be pampered. You just want to sit in your house and want prophet to be prophesied. Prophecy is good, but what I'm saying is that you yourself, the Bible says that you're, you know, um, how does that word go yesterday? Uh, with fear and trembling. Uh, what what out your salvation? salvation? <laughs> what out your salvation? That's depending on one spiritual contractor. You know, you need to know how to do it yourself. That is the one that works more than the one somebody does for you. Because when somebody takes up your case, he won't take it as if it's his own problem. Exactly. He will pray when he has time. But you, you will pray in the morning. You will pray in the afternoon. You will pray in the evening. The Bible says that you that call on the name of the Lord, give him no rest until the next Jerusalem be prayed. So you are going before God in the morning. You are going before God in the afternoon. Hello, it is me in the place of prayer. You are not even giving God rest. But the person you are contracting your case to is eating, is sleeping, is drinking. And then all of a sudden, just remember. Oh, well, Shadi, we got you to pray for her. <laughs> and then they'll just give you leftovers. Say, I will get leftovers in your name. Amen. Praise the Lord. And so God is ready to shift us to an awakening. You know, He's ready. Ephesians 5 14 says, Awake, thou that sleepest, arise from the dead, and Christ shall give you life. A lot of us are in the midst of spiritual slumber and lethargy. God is saying, Awake. There's a song that says, Christians seek not to repose. Hear that guardian angel say, There are thou art in the midst of all. Watch our pray. You cannot afford to let your guards down. The devil is not sleeping. His 24 hours is active. Look at something. He slept the sleep of death on Delilah's laps. Delilah, when after he was sleeping on Delilah's laps, Delilah just saw one man after she had, you know, maybe it's woven the hair, whatever. She just saw one man and said, Come and cut off Samson's head. Somebody that did not know his story took his glory. Can you imagine Samson? The kind of man, the, you know, the angels came to talk about his back. He was a judge, he was a deliverer, and he compromised his destiny because he was not awake when he was supposed to be awake, which means that he was not discerning. 
He gave, he exposed his secret to his enemy. May you not expose your secret to your enemy. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. And then Samson said, let's after the come here. And he didn't know. He said, let me get up as before. You know, but the Bible says he did not know that the Lord had left him. So the action was the same, but the auction had left. May your auction not leave in Jesus' name. You still think you're on fire. You don't know that everything has gone because you have been sleeping. We will not sleep in the name of Jesus. As we met, the Almighty God will help us. In this economy, we rise by praying. That is the secret formula that God has given to the saints. You need to rise up. You need to pray. You need to seek God. You need to ask for grace. You cannot afford to be a mediocre Christian. Amen. Praise the Lord. In this system, we go to the throne, not to the world. The world does not have anything to offer you. The Bible says the woman with the issue of God, she had gone to all the doctors and they could not heal her. I'm not saying doctors don't heal. I'm just saying that we need to go to the throne at all times, not to the world. Prayer gives you an advantage. Nobody gets an advantage by default. It is because of what you have sown, because you have read the word, you have stayed in God's presence, you have a relationship with Him. So it gives you an advantage. And so I've come to encourage somebody that it is time for you to give God your everything. Spiritual degeneration and relaxation is the doorway to degeneration. May you not degenerate in Jesus' name. I have come to encourage you, you know, if, when, when I say give God your everything, I want you to know that an intact pastor box cannot, can never give any fragrance. You didn't break it. You just have the box, you're holding it. You need to break that alabaster box. Break everything before God. Don't withhold anything. And then you will see what he will do. I want you to know that a broken person is a useful person. Be broken before God so God can find you useful in his hands in Jesus' name. I pray that God will reignite your passion for his presence, in, for his relationship, for prayer in the name of Jesus Christ. I pray that God will revive and release apostolic mantles upon you. You know, the mantles of Deborah. The Bible says that Deborah was a leader. She had the mantle of leadership. She had the mantle of affluence and influence. And I know Deborahs are sitting here. May the Lord release the mantles of the Deborahs sitting here in the name of Jesus. Amen. May the Lord release mantles on the Esther's that are sitting here. The mantles of favor. The mantles of taking over. She took over the seat of Vashti. You will take over the seat that God has assigned for you in the name of Jesus. I know that there are roots sitting here. May the Lord release the mantle of good upon you. The mantle that qualifies you for the unqualified. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I know that there are Lydia's sitting here. The mantle of wealth will be released to you. Lydia was a woman of wealth. She was a woman of power. And there are prophetess, representation of prophetess Anna sitting here. The mantle of the prophetic. May the Lord release it unto you. The, the mantle of consistency. The Bible says that she stayed in the temple till Jesus was born. May God release that mantle on you in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name we have prayed. And then if you receive it, say glory. Glory. Praise the Lord. We're going to go to God wants to shift your mindset. And so we all know that the mind is a battleground. It's a battleground. And so the devil is fighting your mind. And only, there can only be one winner. And it is God. You have to win. You cannot afford the enemy to win you in that battle. Because, you know, we are all gardeners. And our mind is like a garden. And so different seeds are being planted in that garden. And it is the one that you water that will grow. So if you continue to water anxiety, and water fear, and water depression, and water negativity, that is what you do. But you know, if you decide that you're going to speak the word of God in your, inside your mind, that is what will grow. It is the word, it is the positivity that you speak, that people will see, that will, you know, shine out of you. May you win the war of the mind in Jesus' name. Amen. And I want you to know that if the devil can control your thinking, he will control your life. That's all he's trying to do. It's like a remote control. Let him just control your mind. Let him just control your mind. And you know, that is why God wants us to shift in our mindset today. Because we need to shift in the way we think. We cannot continue to think the way we are. You know, and you know, what I wrote here is that God wants to shift your mindset from a victim's mentality to a victor's mentality. Stop being the victim of your mind. Let's change our thinking patterns. Let's begin to, you know, let's God, re may the Lord remove us from walking in the fourth dimension to now walking in the fourth dimension. We are supernatural beings. We are not normal human beings. If you act like a normal human being, look at the testimonies we have today. 
You see, if you are a normal human, you will fight that war of the mind, or you will be declaring it. The, 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 the doctors are giving you a prognosis. The prognosis is not good. An ordinary human being will just, some people just give up, and that is it. And you know, I'm a chaplain, so I work in a hospital praying for sick people. You know, once they give up, they die. That's it. Once they give up, give them five days. They are gone, and they will be telling you, I'm at peace. That is the sign that, even when you come and pray for them, they don't want you to pray again. They tell you, I'm at peace. They have given up. You cannot give up, because God did not give up on you. So you cannot give up. You need to hold on to the end. God is not a liar. He's not man that will repent. He's not the son of man. If he has said it, he will do it. He wants all the power in the world. He's able to turn your situation around. He's not tired. <laughs> he, he attends to billions of people on that and he's not tired. And so let's trust in God. Amen? Anywhere your mind has not entered, your body will not be able to enter it. It is what you visualize. It is what you visualize that you can realize in life. If you don't capture it, you cannot receive it. And so that is why your mind is so powerful. Romans 8, 14. It says, for as many as are led by the Spirit of God, these are the sons of God. For you receive not the Spirit of God again to fear, but you receive the Spirit of adoption, wherein we, where we cry out our Father. Hello? Hi. You are sons, you are adopted. We are not ordinary. It says we are no longer, it says we have been adopted. We don't have the Spirit of God anymore. You know, when you become a child of God, you begin to identify with God, and you lose the identity of the world. And so you begin to walk in the privileges of sonship. And as a son, we already know what we have, what God has promised us as a child of God. And so when we hold on to this privilege, it changes our mindset from acting like human beings to acting like spiritual beings, or you know, working as spiritual beings. So one thing I want us to know is that we are not ordinary. We are a covenant child. Don't let the enemy play tricks on your mind. And just like my sister said, when you know who you are, you will know what you are not. You will know what you are not. And when you don't know who you are, the devil will leverage on your ignorance and format your life with it. You don't know who you are. He will leverage on that ignorance and then begin to you know, begin to set your life up for you. You think you are living your life, you don't know that the enemy has already planned your own life, and that's what you are now doing. You are now walking in that path. You are, not, you are no longer walking in God's plan. And like I said, you know, when you know who you are, you will not live like a beggar. You won't be looking for people to validate you and give you accreditation, because you know that your identity is in God. Amen? You will stop having a slavery mentality. Some people think they can never make it in life. Oh, you know what fits them is a particular salary range. <laughs> you know, I was telling my sister a, a, a testimony. There's somebody in America that got a job. She's the end, they made her the MD of a bank. And um, she only has one degree. It's not like she has two degrees. So it's stable. You know, it's not like she had a work lot of blood, working experience. In fact, that degree is in English. You know, she didn't even apply for the job. Somebody brought the job to her. And she filled the application saying, well, let's see what God will do. And guess how much they offered her? And just to make a long story short, they offered her $850,000 a year in Nigeria. I don't know how much that is in pounds, though. $850,000 would be like almost $650,000. Yeah, you put it in any Can you imagine? Can you imagine? And, you know, when she was having a Zoom interview, because it was during COVID, well, maybe after COVID, but you know, close to that time. When she was having the Zoom interview, the guy had said, she said, she had said, the guy said, how much does she want to do? I said, well, how much are you willing to pay? So, you know, she said, well, as the MD of a bank, um, I'm just wondering how much you'd like to offer me. And the man said, 500,000. And she just opened her mouth in shock. But the man thought that she was disappointed with the amount. Meanwhile, she wanted to faint. You know that? What am I here? You know that? I would say, I want to clean my face. And the man was like, Oh, we're so sorry, we're so sorry. We're going to print our employees well. I'm going to call you back tomorrow. We're going to renegotiate. And she was still opening her mouth. <laughs> That's what am I hearing? The man came back and said, It's coming out of the house. I said, It was somebody else. He made a set that time. She would even beg the man, Don't call me tomorrow. Don't worry, it's okay. Because you know, like, don't change their mind, right? This was how this girl started earning this amount. Can you imagine? But some of us, we have pegged ourselves. You know, African mentality. 
Sometimes you feel like you can't even go beyond this. You know when you apply for a job, you want to go to apply for that kind of job anyway. Maybe you just apply for something in your school. Ah, let me just apply for one fifty thousand or two hundred or maybe two fifty k is fine. Meanwhile, God wants to give you more, but you have limited yourself. May we not continue to limit ourselves in Jesus' name? Then God opposes this slavery mentality that we feel like we we are able to want more. You are worth more. You are a woman of value. Stop allowing people to you know walk over you. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. You are not a weakly, we have dominion. Courage is your birthright. Use it. Use it. You know, we are no longer under the law. We are exempted, you know, from things that are happening to others that don't have to happen to you. That's what I'm saying in essence. You know, we need to begin to see ourselves with the mind of Christ. You can never rise above the level of your mindset. Because that is what you see, that is what you believe in. And you know, our thoughts frame who we end up being, and it becomes our paradigm and worldview. And so let's begin to have the mind of Christ in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Let's believe God for the impossible. We serve a God of the supernatural. You know, there's an analogy I have that if you walk out of your front yard for 100 days, you just continue to walk and um, you take 1,000 steps every day. 1,000 steps. After some time, what do you think will happen? You are going to create a pathway. You know, there was no path there before. But you have been walking there so long. You have been walking there so long. That is the same thing that happens to us. When you begin to think of those negative things, and you think of all these things like, I will not make it, maybe I will die, maybe I'm not good enough, maybe I'm a failure, and rejection, and all these things, it will start manifesting. Because you have repeated it so many times. Consistency is powerful. Even if it's the spiritual, when you pray for a long time at 3 a.m. in the morning, you will see that without your alarm, you start praying at 3 a.m. You start waking up. Because you are consistent. You are hitting something in the spiritual. And so that thing now tunes your body to wake up at 3. It's the same thing. When you begin to believe negativity for so long, it will become who you are. But you know, if you stay away from that same law for 100 days and you don't walk in it, what do you think happens? The grass begins to grow. Because you are speaking positivity. You have a positive outlook in your life. You are believing in, in good things. You are, you are declaring the right things concerning you. And that is what will manifest. May the Lord help us in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Okay, I thought I saw a friend of mine from Nigeria. <laughs> she said she was going to try and make this person. She just looks like her. Praise the Lord. I agree. And so, yes, praise the Lord. If you know that you are going to receive a shift in your mindset, I want you to shout glory. Glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm going to go to the next one. If God wants you to shift away from your past, praise God. Some people are so caught up in their past that they refuse to move forward. You just continue to remember everything that has happened to you in the past. And so you are no longer living, you are just existing. You are just existing. You remember the pain, you remember the hurts, and you are doing an injustice to your destiny. Once you continue to hold on to your past, your past is behind you. It will never come back again. And so don't allow a temporary setback to become a permanent defeat in your life. God wants you to shift out of that zone. The Bible says the righteous fall down seven times and get up. And so if you fall down one time, get up. The second time, get up. Don't stay down. You are forbidden from staying down. That is what God is saying. You cannot afford to stay down. There is so much God has invested in you. Don't let, you know, your past experience keep you from what God is about to do in your life. You know, start living and, you know, give yourself permission to shift. Give yourself permission to thrive. I don't want to be like this anymore. I don't want to hold on to these things, you know. And like I said, if you don't forget your past, you can shift forward. And so, you know, Ruth had to forget her past. Ruth had gone through so much. She had lost her husband. She lost her brother-in-law. She lost her father-in-law. She didn't even have a child for 10 years. But with all that, she still decided to move with Naomi. You know, she still decided to detach from her past. And that was the difference between her and the wife of Lot. Why, Lot's wife could not detach herself from her past. That is why she turned to a pillar of salt. Because she looked back. You have to be able to move forward. You cannot continue to hold on to your pain. I know your pain is valid. Maybe you have suffered loss. I lost my sister seven years ago, eight years ago to cancer. Eight years ago to cancer. And so, you know, I know how painful it is. But you cannot continue to stay there. Your husband has cheated on you so many times. That's what you hold on to every day. You will not move forward. 
and he's living his life. You know, you need to move forward. You cannot, you're, the person is just going to die in depression. And you have so much ahead of you. You know, maybe somebody has disappointed you. Somebody has abused you. And you know, they betrayed you. And you are still holding on. You have to let it go. How will you go to the next level? How will you shift? God is not going to speak to you again until you release those people. This is not going to take you anywhere. You know, Joseph had to move forward. If he was still nursing the pains of his brothers, if he was bitter, he would have never interpreted the dream of the baker and butter. And he would not have become the prime minister. So there are things we need to leave behind. Look at Jephna. Jephna was one of the judges in the Bible. You know, let's, let me even read it. Judges 11 2. Gilead's wife bore sons, and when they grew up, they drove Jephna out and said to him, you, you have no inheritance in our father's house, for you are the son of a harlot. And so he had a stepmother that was a harlot, and his brothers were 70 men, and they drove him out of the house. You cannot live with us. And he ran away somewhere. But later they went to meet him that they wanted to become the leader of their city. And they wanted him to become a judge. But he was still if he was still holding on to the heart. He would have missed that opportunity. And so when God wants to promote you, God wants to do other things in your life, but you're having bitterness. I don't want us to allow, you know, don't let us allow our history or our past to define us. That is not our identity. Your past is your past. You know, failure is meant to be a teacher. It's not meant to be a tormentor. Don't continue to live a life of, life of torment because of what has happened in the past. You know, move on. God wants us to move on. God wants us to keep trusting in Him, to keep spreading our wings, to, to keep flying, to keep shining. May the Almighty God help you in the name of Jesus to be able to break away from that past and enter into the glorious future it has for you in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord. And so we're going to go to our last one. God wants to shift. God wants to shift us out of our seasons. Whatever that you know means to you. I don't know how long you've been waiting for something in particular, or trusting God for something, or going through a season or a challenge. God wants to shift us out of that season. Amen. I know there are women here that are going through transition, or maybe you know it's a time where you are not. You are, sometimes you're even confused. What, what should I do now? What steps should I take? You know, indecision. And God is saying that He wants me to reveal to you the next level. He wants to show it to you. He wants to speak to you. And, you know, He wants you to be spiritually alert. Praise the Lord. And so, a time of shifting is a time of breaking forth to the left and to the right. When God wants to do the new thing, it's a time to dance. It's a time to shine. It's a time for your own testimony. When He shifts you, He wants to do something new. It's a time to reign in the sphere of influence God has given you. And so there are three things that happen when God is ready to shift your season. The first one is that He will show you mercy. A lot of us need mercy. We all need mercy. Amen? God will show you mercy. Then God will remember you. When is your time of shifting? It is a time when God remembers you. And the last one is that God will send you destiny helpers. People that will help you. People that have what you need. There are people that have what you need. And those are the people He will send. And so the first one is when God shows you mercy. Isaiah 38 1 says, The Lord told Hezekiah to set his house in order because he was going to die. And so Hezekiah talked to God and prayed and told God to remember how he had sat him. So here, of course, the Lord had already given him a bad picture. Even when God gives you a bad picture, what I mean, he's not a no man. <laughs> but the Bible says Hezekiah turned to the wall and prayed. And he also told God to remember him. And so he placed a demand on the mystery of remembrance. There is something called, you know, God remembers us. Like somebody said, he stores it in the vial. Your good works. The Bible says that God is not unjust to, to forget your labor of love. There are things you do, and God will remember. And you have to call him, say, bring me into remembrance. You know, you have to call him, Lord, remember this, remember that. This is what I did. Don't just keep quiet. You know, it's not like he doesn't know, but he, that's what his word says. So, the Bible says, bring ye words. That means bring the word of God to him. You know? And so he prays to God, and God heard him. He didn't keep quiet and just accept it. Ah, you're going to die. Okay, I'll die. Oh, I'm going to fire you. Okay, I'll fire you. You need to, you know, you need to fight. It's a war. You know? The violence take it by force. Don't just accept violence. And so every 
God, this that has brought you tears, may the Almighty God hold it away in the name of Jesus. Every negative body that is bringing you trauma, may the Lord move it out of your life in the name of Jesus Christ. May it be overturned, even as the Almighty God overturned the decree that came to the Jews. May the Lord do overturn that decree, that thing that is tormenting you, that is torturing you in the name of Jesus. It will not manifest, it will not find expression in the name of Jesus. It will submit to the word of God. It will submit to the authority of God. I want you to know that anything that doesn't line up with the word of God does not have capacity to survive. Because the word of God is greater. And that is what will stand, and that, will, and that is what will work for you in Jesus' name. Amen. And so there are archives of your testament. Archives and testaments of your goodness before God. He has it, he's storing it, and it will work for you in the name of Jesus Christ. And Ezekiah went from being extinct to being extended, from extinction to extension. That was what he did by just seeking God and staying before God. And may the mercy of God shift you this season in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Praise the Lord. Also, when God remembers you, Isaiah 49, 15, it says, Can a woman forget her suffering child that should not have compassion on the child of her womb? Surely they may forget it, but I will not forget you. It is impossible for God to forget you. Even when everybody forgets you, your mother, your parents, they forgot David in the wilderness. God will never, never forget you. The Bible says he owns the hearts of kings, and he turns it to wherever he wants. So anybody you want to seek, anybody you want to, whatever it is, he will make the right person remember you. That person will not even be able to sleep, like in the house of us. Look at David, he woke up one morning, he didn't know what to do. He said, who can I bless in the house of Saul? You know, he was looking for somebody to show kindness. May, may, may heaven, you know, locate you for kindness this evening in Jesus' name. When people are looking for businesses to bless, it is your business that will show up. When people are looking for, you know, children to lift up, is your children that will be lifted up. When God is looking for people to heal, you will be the number one on the list in Jesus' name. God will not forget you. There's this song that says, Mudube, Mori Anuda. Mudube, Mori Anuda. Sorry, Kishé, Kokore, Mori Anuda. Motupe Baba, Motupe, Moria Nuba, Motupe, Moria Nuba, Sori Kishe Koko Radio, Gloria Nuba. Because I believe that God is about to show mercy on some people. My grace, they begin to speak in tongues to God. Father, you are the God of mercy. You are the God of mercy. Father, show me kindness. Give me this year wrong to an end. Oh God, my God, let mercy speak in the place of judgment. Let mercy speak in the place of judgment. Oh God, my God, let mercy speak, oh God. Let kindness find me out.
And so, um, <laughs> okay, so the third one is when God sends you destiny helpers. We're still talking about where God wants to shift your season. So He sends you destiny helpers. So these are people that have been carefully selected to help you in your journey in life. They are equipped, they are empowered to help you. And you need them. And so God will bring them to your life to add value to you. These people are recommenders. That was, it was the servant of Saul that recommended David to the palace. You need those people, they are recommenders. You need king makers. It was Bathsheba and Nathan that went to tell David that look, Solomon is the next in line. He needs to become king. God will send you king makers. People that will push you to the throne. People that will push your children to the throne. People that will speak when you're not there. What is it that will speak on your behalf? Do you know that when you're going to be promoted, you will not be that room? The decision is made behind your back. When those decisions are being made, the Holy Spirit will be your voice. In the name of Jesus, you will not be taken out of that group. You will not be eliminated. What is due to you, you will get it. You will not forget your labor of God. You have never you will be rewarded. Somebody else will not take your seat in your marriage. Somebody else will not push you out. A woman that doesn't know what she has suffered for will not come and sit on your seat. In the name of Jesus, in the day of your joy, you will not be missing. In the day of your celebration, you will not be missing. When your children are Life. 
And that girl told him, I know somebody is a prophet that can heal you. God will roll away your reproach in the name of Jesus. Amen. He was he was a general, but he had he had a reproach. Yes. You know, there are sometimes you are looking good, you are looking fine, you are speaking well, you are wearing all the designer, but you had a problem. And you are the only one that knows it. May your own not be outside. Do you know that donkey? When Jesus was going to Jerusalem, and he said they should go and lose that cult. That cult was tied at the entrance of the gate. That means that that cult, everybody knew his problem. It was in front of the gate. Some people got, you know, God will not allow people to know your nakedness in Jesus. Your nakedness should not be right there. It will be covering your secret. Now we ask him, how are you making it? They won't know that you have the shirt of this back in you up. You know, and so that was what happened to that um, to, to that donkey. So that name was there to run away the reproach of Naaman. May God send you the right person that will bring the right solution into your life in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. If you know you are blessed, I want you to give God praise today. Hallelujah! <laughs> Let's up and pray. <laughs> Mark 11 2. He says, Go into that village opposite you, and immediately you will find a donkey and calls tied down. Lose them and bring them to me. And then verse 13 says, If anyone says anything to you, you shall say, The Lord has need of, need of it. You know why? Because when God sent his disciples to go and lose that donkey, people were asking them, Why are you losing me? People will challenge your blessing, people will challenge your shift. Why, why, why are you using him? Why are you doing this for that person? And God knew, and Jesus knew. And Jesus said, if they challenge you, tell them that God has God has need of it. And so God has need of you. Yeah. And nobody can no longer delay your blessing in Jesus' name. In the name of Jesus. That donkey represents destinies that have been covered. Lives that have been covered. Destinies that have been glories that have been sat upon. Because they tied down that donkey. And it was at the end time. We're going to use that to pray today. The Father, in the name of Jesus, I untie and shift every woman here. Every woman that has been tied down. I don't know where you have been tied down in life like that donkey. But in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, the Almighty God is untying you. You are moving out of every cage, every spiritual dungeon, every dungeon, every, every mentality dungeon, every marital dungeon, every financial dungeon, every infirmity dungeon, every epidemical dungeon, whatever dungeon that everything has brought you into. Oh, he will come. 
God. We give you adoration. Well, of my God, man. If you know that you need a shift, if you know that God, you are sensing a shift in your life, I want you to come out so that we can pray for you. Praise the Lord. If you know that you are sensing a shift, that God is sending you to the offseason, my days, get a bush, break a level, son, for you. My days, get a level, shake a level. God is sending you to the offseason. It is your next level. Let's pray for his hands. Look at how you pray. And then stop with him. You know that God is saying that it is your sister of shifting. My
Oh! 